Hey everyone, this is Mari Robson and I am here with uh, Neil Britton, who is the president of the Slow County Arts Council and um, the lovely Adol Mitchell, who is the project coordinator for the San Luis Obispo Arts Council. And today we are talking all about open studios. So welcome you guys, thanks for joining me today. Thanks Always a pleasure. Yay, so this is the first time I've ever participated in open studios. I've gone to open studios before. This is here in San Luis Obispo County, but it's virtual this year, which is super interesting. And I'm really excited to participate, but I know everyone's gonna have a lot of questions on how it's all going to take place and uh, how people can find the artists and support the artists. So I just have a couple questions I wanna ask you both that that's okay. Let's jump of right course. in. Um, okay, so when is this going to start and when does it go through? What are the dates of it? So um, the virtual tool will go live on September 22nd and it'll go through December 31st, so the end of the year. So that's great. So perfect time to like buy Christmas gifts or, or treat yourself to something amazing. Um, okay. So it starts on September 22nd and it's virtual. So is it going to be something that we can find on the Slow County Arts website or is it on a separate website that we need to know about? So we will have it linked to our website, but I believe the, our, our partner Art Advocates are, is gonna host it on their website or a separate website um, that, that they're setting up. Okay. Um, but of course it'll be linked through our website and we'll have links on social media as well too available. It will be really easy to find. Okay, super. And so how many artists are you expecting to have this year? We have just under a hundred. We we capped it at a hundred artists and then of course we had a couple drop out last minute. Um, so I think around 95 artists is, is what we're at. That is a lot of artists here on the Central Coast. And they're all Central Coast artists, correct? They're all Central Coast artists. Yeah, we do have two Santa Maria, uh, but I didn't want to kick them out because I was like, you know what, let's do Isn't all. that, Santa Maria is not considered Central Coast? I thought it it's was. Central it's Central Coast, but it's not our county technically. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Santa Barbara County, but we want to be more inclusive anyway. And I think we're going to start trying to think of things to invite our friends from the South over there uh, yeah. up into things that we're gonna do. Yeah. It's interesting because Santa Maria is close to us, closer than they are to Santa Barbara. <laughs> yeah. City-wise, so that's, um, you're right, I get that. We should include everybody, more art, more fun. Okay, so let's say now I am an artist and I am participating, what, what should I be expecting? So I'm expecting that I will get the links from our advocates and the link from uh, Slow County Arts. And so sh should I be doing anything special on my end, on my social media channels? Um, well, of course, I mean, I think any, any event that you want to do, you want to put your best foot forward as far as uh, promoting it. So you would probably do everything you would do if you were doing your own solo art show. You may want to send even like some people might be sending postcards. Um, definitely sending an email blast, definitely keeping it prominent in your, um, your Instagram feed and your Facebook stories and your feed as well. So you should be doing the work uh, that you would normally be doing for any other show or event you would be doing. So, um, I think it's kind of an interesting thing too for different artists. Like I, I was just thinking about it for myself. What what I'd like to do is to kind of show that leading up to it, things that you're working on, and even possibly showing um, behind the scenes in your studio because that's kind of the cool thing about open studios is you get to go see the artist studios, right? Um, so, are you expecting that any of the artists might be doing any kind of Zoom invites where they're um, inviting? Uh, people to come see their studios that way? Or how are we yeah, outside the box? Cool. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of cool. I think I'm going to do, I, I'm actually participating as well. And I think I'm going to do like an Instagram live thing. Oh, 
I'll be working on something. I'll be working on something. So it kind of coincides and I'll uh, definitely be dropping the, the link in my bio and I'll definitely be telling people to go to this thing as well. Lots but, it, you know, what, what's great about it, too, is that it's it was a lot cheaper than what a normal open studio would be. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's longer. So we are really tried to pivot during this time of like this COVID time to like something that people could do and knowing full well that artists uh, are pretty financially strapped. Um, so not being able to do shows or events or normal things like this, like being able to bring them some value and make it a long, kind of a long period, a long, it's almost like a marathon in a way. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Because open studios is usually like, even if you're doing both weekends or whatever, it's only it's only a couple of days to cram it all in there. This is like a long haul, so. Um, yeah, it's actually really nice. And, and hopefully one day we'll be able to look at our live. I think that's really critical. But um, in the interim, it would be nice to even have this also when you do open studios next year when it's open to still do the virtual version because there's a lot of people a lot of people have instagram followers that don't live in the central coast but would like to support central coast artists so um it's a, it's going to be interesting let's just say <laughs> and thank you thank you for doing it this way it's really great yeah so we're happy to bring something to our to our constituency you know during these times like we're trying to do the best we can to help them out I know, and you guys are doing so much stuff and we really appreciate it. Um, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So when I am, let's say I'm, I am somebody who is interested in art and I want to add to my collection and I hear about this virtual open studios, what does the process look like for me? What do I do? Um, I would say, you know, first, First, follow the link that you're going to find either on social media or website um, or other artist links, and it'll take you to a web page, and it's going to be organized kind of like the previous catalogs were, where it's region to region, so, you know, South County to North County, and from there, the artists will be in alphabetical order, and they'll have a, a picture that represents some of their artwork, and then links to their website in a little description. And um, so that kind of is going to be the guide of, of where to find that artwork. That's great. So they can go there. They can kind of get a flavor of who the artists are going to be. Click on it and they'll go to that artist's website where they can purchase. I see. So it's going to be everyone's going to be hosting at their own individual website or page. Right. So I guess that's also part of your prep. Not only are you promoting you want to promote this thing, but you want to make sure that your website is kind of up to date right. and user friendly. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, so like some of those websites are, 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 I use Big Cartel, but I know a lot of artists use Shopify or Etsy. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's all pretty simple stuff, hopefully for people to be able to set that up. And okay, and then what kind of product are you expecting that people can see when they get to these websites? Like in and let's say this was just a normal open studios, what type of product are people um, possibly going to be seeing when they head over to these different websites? Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be mostly visual art, I would say, but anything from sculptures, glass work, to uh, painting, oil painting, acrylic painting, you know, there's gonna be a, a lot of different types of art but it's going to be more in the visual art realm. Mm -hmm. yeah everything from uh jewelry to pottery to paintings to i'm just, I, I would even say there's probably some sculpture type people some three-dimensional people even some like felt work Ooh. yeah i mean there's there's so much i mean it's kind of a broad range just like the central coast kind of provides a broad range of of art and culture mm -hmm. um yeah to its constituents and its and its clients. Yeah, it'll be the same thing. Yeah, and I think a lot of artists know that this is entering into the holiday season. So there, there's going to be a lot of nice offerings, I would imagine, from really high price to well reasonably priced so that people can really have a nice flavor and find something that will fit perfect for their um, their budget. <laughs> yep. 
And that's something we also um, uh, advise artists is to have a wide range of options for people to buy. Yeah. You know, maybe have something small or a print for for those people who don't have a huge budget to work with, but you know, also have those original pieces up there um, that you might find more valuable. Sure, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, so why do you feel that it's so important? I'd like to hear your both answer to this. Why do you feel it's so important to support the local art scene here? Let's start with you, Ava. Um, well, I think that not only are you supporting our community, uh, but you're also you're advocating for more art artists yes. to be here, to live here, mm -hmm. make this home. So I think that's really important is to make our community a good place for artists to live and thrive. I, I took a great answer. And I know Neil's got all kinds of thoughts on this. Yeah. <laughs> Brewing over there. Um, yeah, I don't know where to begin, but to be, to be, to support a local artist, um, it's to kind of, kind of be supporting local businesses um not just just past the art but the artist is going to purchase items goods and services from local businesses in order to make their work and obviously before these times they were showing their works in local businesses in which you know ever so everybody benefits in a lot of ways also i just think if you don't have original art in your house i think you have a problem <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> should... <Neil. laughs> yeah uh yeah i'm sorry oh no you know what i'm not sorry i'm gonna say that i no sorry um, yeah i no. do i agree with original art in your homes and i think that a lot of times that people and this is a good point in in the way that people find it to be intimidating to buy art but right now um what it's the whole that whole concept of the gallery scene all of that has completely changed it still exists but there's so many makers on uh, instagram or on and whatever social media that are selling their work at a full range of prices where you can support them and you can have original art so there's really no need to go and have a mass-produced poster unless it's of some amazing rock band that you love or something <laughs> when you have an, a, a really beautiful original piece of work. And a lot of times, a lot of these artists will even do commissions and do something custom just for you. So there's, like you said, there really isn't much excuse. Uh, we could say it nicer, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love collecting art from different artists and it just makes your home so much more um, delicious to be surrounded yeah. by lots of different, um, you know, it shows your personality. It just, it's such a great thing. And so now even this virtual event is so great because a lot of people who uh, maybe couldn't have made it on those two weekends because it's only those two weekends out of the year. They can do this for the three months. They've got an opportunity to pop into and individually check out all these different studios. So it's really a very unintimidating format now where you can have art and, and support local art. And I really like what you said, Neil, about it. The artists are buying supplies from the local stores or, or however they're making. And it is a full circle moment that um, it's great. So, yeah, good answer, yeah. everyone. Definitely. <laughs> and I also want to throw in that, um, yeah, I think that artists, shoot, wait, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll circle back. We'll circle back at some point. <laughs> Too late, Adel. That's it. <laughs> now, we had one shot. Yeah. Messed it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, feel free to interrupt me if, if it pops back into your mind. Um, I kind of want to wrap up just talking about the what you what really important that work that the two of you guys are doing and the fact that you are um, really Adel's just not just cracking up really. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I mean, I'm doing so well, and then I was like, of course, I'm gonna lose my hair. That's great. Good sentence. It's just casual. Um, I want to talk about the, the Arts Council, and I know during this time, like many, many, many businesses, it is a real um, 
challenge for the Arts Council to stay afloat because um, because of all these venues being shut down and opportunities. So can you speak on that a little bit, Neil, and, and kind of share where you're at right now and, and what your, your hopes are um, for the future of the Arts Council? I think we're in a very difficult time um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, obviously the venues and the artists have had to kind of reevaluate how they um, show their work and whether or not they can even be in the businesses and whether or not they can be open, obviously <laughs> speaks volumes to the amount of opportunity that has been cut. Um, and that is definitely like a trickle down situation. If we, if, if venues can't be open, then we can't facilitate, you know, um, we can't facilitate events for artists. So there's that part. Additionally, the county um, has decided to diverge the funds that they would normally have given us to other programs, other things in need. And so, which is the double-edged sword. I, you can't complain when they're actually doing some good for the community, but conversely, no, no money has been given to the arts uh, via the county, at least. Zero dollars have been invested to that. So what we've had to do is try to figure out ways to kind of pivot into ways that we can make money. Um, but what we also wanna do conversely is provide value so it's been really it's been really tough and i hate personally asking for donations but i understand how important it is and that's I, when i see somebody that needs money or wants to do something like that i'm definitely somebody who gives money so i should probably uh start thinking about it in a different way and Maybe that kind of maybe I've kind of lost my train of thought, but the, the <laughs> fact of the matter is we we really need to we really need um, people support people support it would be very, very vital right now for the survival um, of the of the Arts Council. Right, and I want I really wanted to bring this up kind of at the end of this um, conversation, because, um, you know, I, I it without art, it's like, what, what are we here for so. Uh, it's it's always so sad that art is the first thing that gets cut from the schools or from every program. And it's the one thing that brings us joy <laughs> in this time, you know, especially now when we can all really use some a little reprieve and a little respite from from what's going on. So if uh, you're listening to this podcast and it is something that speaks to you and you can support the arts, um, is there a way that they can donate? on the So County Arts website. Do you yes. have a, there a donate? There section? is a donate button um, just for general donations. Uh, go through our platform network for good. Um, and it is all tax deductible as well. Oh, that's great too, because you are a nonprofit. So, yeah. so, um, so, if you can, that would be a great donation. And if not, you know, support a maker who has created something with their hands and their heart. Um, that really helps as well. And that goes back into the community. So uh, it's just really great thing that even during this really crazy time, I know you guys are working really, really hard and you're kind of thanklessly doing this job. That's why I wanted to have this little podcast here and, and kind of get the word out that we're doing this virtual event and and to support the arts. So is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, I'm I think I'm really looking forward to seeing how fun it's going to be to have like a virtual art after dark or an art after um, like an open studio tour. Yeah. yeah. On top of art after dark, I'm actually really, I, I, these things are really great. I think Mari, you and I wouldn't have met if it wasn't for virtual art after dark. I know, so good. I think this is, I'm so looking forward to having another opportunity to meet a bunch of artists that I may have not been able to see or talk to before. Me too. And especially to learn about all the, the really, I you know there's so much talent here on the Central Coast. So this is a really great venue that you guys have put together. And I personally deeply appreciate it. And 
I know, and I know the public will appreciate it as well. So thank you both. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, go buy art, people. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs> Yay.